Welcome everyone to a new tutorial. Today we are going to make a fun little avocado paperweight. These are so much fun to make and I'm going to show you how to do it. This is going to be based on a, a Hass avocado. These are the classic ones that are grown down in California for their wonderful nutty flavor and high oil content. And what you're going to need is an avocado shaped stone. I have a lot of stones that I gather from a riverbed. You want one that's not too round and not too flat, but really has a really nice avocado shape that fits in your hand. And you want your stone to be smooth and not too pitted. So you're going to paint the stone black. And then if you feel like you're going to have a hard time sketching it freehand, I would suggest just printing out a clip art, a free clip art from the internet, and using your General's charcoal white pencil to trace around. Or you can sketch freehand around the edge of your stone. You just want to make sure that the top of your oval is a little smaller and the bottom is wider and more of an avocado shape. And if you have a more elongated stone, just trace an oval around the outside edge and then go back and tuck in those top sides to give it a more avocado shape. So once your outline is done, you want to do the center pit. So I just mark a dot about two thirds of the way down the avocado and I place a dot there and then I line up something round on top. I just use these paint bottles to get the approximate size of an avocado pit on that stone. And I traced it on a piece of paper and cut it out and now I'm folding it in half and then folding it in half again to make quarters and then I'm going to snip off the point. And then I can line up that hole with the dot on the stone and then trace around it to give us the outline for the avocado pit. Now I've mixed up some shades of brown and I'm selecting a dotting tool. You can just use whatever you have to make this center dot. It's going to take up about uh, the first half inch of our design. And I'm putting in a blonde colored paint to make the first dot in the center and then I'm going to start making the first row. So first you will do a cross and then put one dot in between each of those, right centered in between, and then you're going to go back and fill in the spaces. You want to make sure that your paint is thick enough that it's not going to pull out because you want your dots to remain distinct and not touch each other. This takes a little practice to get them in here this tightly. So on the next row I'm offsetting a light brown. So this is just a little bit darker than my blonde colored paint. And all these paints will be listed in the video description comments. So offsetting that in between the dots of the first row, all the way around and then switching to the next row in a medium brown. And we're just going to keep working our way out to darker and darker shades of brown using slightly larger tools until you reach the edges of your guideline that you drew on there for the pit. Now I'm going to let that dry and I'm mixed up six shades of green paint and I'm going to use again a very small tool or a toothpick to dot around the outline with the darkest shade of green. Then next do the uh, somewhat medium shade of green using the same size tool because you want these to be very small. This is just the outline edge of the avocado skin. And then you're going to go back and start to work on the fleshy part of the avocado using a slightly larger tool because this will be distinct from the edge. And you'll be using this tool for the entire inside of the avocado. So go around the outside in your main shade of avocado green. And just fit them in there as best you can and then use the same tool to do the next row in a slightly lighter shade of avocado green. You can just add a little bit of white paint to what you have to lighten that up and just continue to do that until you have three or four shades of light avocado. So now I've got those first two rows done on both stones. And 
we're going to repeat with the next shade. Just keep offsetting as best as you can. Your dots are going to need to be a little bit smaller as you work your way toward the center of the stone, just so they will fit the space. So I switched to a smaller tool at this point, slightly smaller, just so I could continue to offset the rows as I moved to the lighter shades. So now I've even gone to a smaller tool and once you start to get close to that pit you can just walk those dots around so they will fit the space. And I had a mistake here so I always keep my pointy q-tips handy so I can wipe those off quickly and then I repaint with the black and let that dry and then continue dotting. Just walking those dots down to where they fit until all that space is filled in. So allow this to dry completely overnight and then mix up four shades of this dark green acrylic. And I used heavy bodied acrylics with this because I need the paint to be very thick and then mixed in some Liquitex gloss pouring medium which gave me very thick glossy paint. And I'm going to be applying this to the back of the stone with a small paintbrush, just sort of picking up the paint and glopping it down, leaving small peaks. And that will dry into a bumpy texture like avocado skin, or I guess they used to be called alligator pears uh, because of this bumpy skin on the back of the avocados. So just continue to dot using different size tools. You want a variety of, of sizes and a variety of shades and just continue to fill in the space with small tools until you've really covered the entire backside. And allow that to dry for at least two days before you turn them over. And once it's dry, it will leave this wonderful bumpy texture that just feels great in your hand. So now I know I can turn the stones over and I can finish the front side. I like to put little tiny white micro dots in between the spaces of the uh, avocado green. I just think it makes the um, paint look uh, like a little bit more woven texture and brightens it up a bit. Then I let that dry and I removed all the guidelines with the wet q-tip and I'm going to seal it with a clear acrylic spray. And there you are. You're all done. These are wonderful little gifts for your friends who love avocados. I made these for my friend Diane who works at an avocado farm down in Ventura County. Thanks Diane for the inspiration.